All right, guys, this is my friend Laura, uh, and she's out here today, you know, hanging out with me. And she's got her little kids out here, and we're all walking dogs and having a good time. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're talking about getting Laura a second dog. And Laura already has a nice black lab, and it's an awesome dog. But uh, you know how it is. I mean, if you're going to have a dog, you might as well have two. Dog has a buddy. Kids have, a, you know, another dog to play with. And you kind of get a, a deal going where you get, a, you, you, know, you get your pup lined out, and it gets to be like you like it. Then you bring that new puppy in, and what happens? It teaches the new one, right? Yeah, you yeah, know, the old the puppy teaches the new that's one, right? That's, and that's what we're going for. Yeah. So now what we got to try to do is decide what kind of Labrador Retriever that Laura wants. Now, so we're going to take a look. We're going from the last video. So we have this English style and we have this field style. And we're going to walk them around a little bit and then trade up and walk them around again. And then we'll come over here to the table and make them stay. And we'll take a look, uh, look at the differences in how they're built. And we'll talk about the differences in managing them. So just follow me, Laura. Oh, now this is Charlie. Oh, come on, Charlie. Up, up. Now, we've already been out here with Charlie. I mean, you've been here for an hour and a half or so. And you notice uh, we've been out here with Charlie, and he's played fetch with the children. He's run. He's climbed. He's jumped. He's, he's just been a ball of fire all morning. Up, up, up. Uh, and what have those, those little white dogs been doing primarily? laying around okay so that's our first big difference right is this dog's been doing what the whole time you've been here running around yeah. right and this dog's been doing what chilling chilling okay <laughs> so if we're going to talk in terms of the difference between what people call english labs and american labs which is really just field labs and show labs the first thing the most noticeable thing from a mom's point of view because really only moms have dogs uh the the first thing to notice is the energy level okay now we can do the same stuff i mean you and i i've got charlie who's a field bred dog and you have river who's a show bred dog and we're doing the same thing right the difference is charlie has been able to do this a hundred times today he's had children uh chase taking him and moving him you know all morning people have been coming and going all morning this guy here has done it maybe 10 times all right so Let's trade up, let's trade dogs. Okay, and you can see how River in this heat's getting tired. So what I'm gonna do with River is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra motivation. Good, cause that's the one thing you can count on with these English dogs, is you can really control their uh, behavior a whole lot with treats. Now, if I told you that when you were training your dog, like your kids would either have to do a lot of leash walking or a lot of treat giving, what do you think would be easier to get your children and the children that visit to do? Treat giving. Give treats. That's right. So treat giving is always going to be easier than playing fetch, and it's going to be easier than having to take a lot of big, long leash walks. So that's another advantage that goes to the English lab. Oh, as it relates to, like, uh, you know, a mom's busy schedule. Now, you notice how this dog kind of falls off of there? <laughs> Watch how often Charlie falls off. It's going to be not yeah. very often, right? So why do you think that is? Um, just general laziness? No, it's not laziness. It's just that this dog, feel that dog. Put your hand on that dog and push down, right? Now put your hand on this dog and push down. Don't tell you far. <laughs> Can you tell a difference? Yeah. Okay. So how does this dog feel? Like bit, soft and, yeah, and chubby? Soft now how does that one feel? Like springy? Yeah. Lean and sprint and springy. Yeah. So more agile, more athletic, higher energy, higher endurance. So it's just easier for this dog. It's just easier for that dog, right? It's just it's just easier. It's just that simple. Like some people. Like you and I trying to play basketball, yeah. right? Okay. You know, people will be like, "Hey, uh, just just jump up there and put it in that hole." And I'm like, uh, "What are you talking about?" Right? So we're out here. We're on the same course. We're having a good time with both dogs. But like you can tell that this one struggles a little bit, especially now that we're on our, you know, second rotation here. It gets a little bit more tired. It was a little clumsy to start off with. Oh, yeah. He was you know? super yeah. yeah, a little clumsy to start off with. And then as they get fatigued, they become more clumsy. You run into that at work, right? You work in the fitness industry. Yeah. Don't people get a little bit clumsy as they get fatigued? It's the same way with the dogs. But if you, you know, were trying to go to the gym and uh, work with a person, this dog would lay around and watch you. What do you think that one would do? Yeah. It would want to come help, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Come on, come on, buddy. Up, up, up. Now, you'll see this one's starting to try to avoid the work. You see it's trying to go around, you know? His tongue's hanging out. Guys, this is a fatigue meter. You see this dog's tongue, how it's hanging out? 
That's a fatigue meter. That lets you know that you're, you know, pretty much getting to the end of your dog's uh, exercise session. Now, if you look back there at Charlie, <laughs> Uh, like, look, making me wait? he doesn't look fatigued at all and that's literally what he's thinking why are you making me wait okay this dog is thinking hey my gosh when is this going to be over <laughs> <laughs> hey when 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 are we going to get to go in and lay in the air conditioner and charlie is thinking hey when's this going to be over come on buddy because i want to go out back and do some retrieving which is why we have the four-wheeler sitting out here it's because we're fixing to, get to do some four-wheeler riding and some retrieving Sit, stay, stay. Now, we come over here and we're, uh, you know, on our exam table and we're able to get, you know, the same thing. They're both sitting there. They're both being good. They both were able to uh, navigate the small challenges course. It's just one is able to do it uh, better, right, with more speed, more precision, and get more repetitions in. So basically, the uh, way it would break down in your life is, uh, so move over here so Eli can get this camera moving uh, just a little bit. Yeah, just move over here a little bit. Oh, okay. okay, so when you go to your party, so you're in carpool line, and somebody's talking about getting an English lab. Mm -hmm. See how that dog's head looks? It's kind of big and wide, uh -huh. wide chest, big thick bones, big old feet. Mm -hmm. See this tail? How the tail's real wide at the base? They call that otter tail. Okay, this is the kind of dog that you see in an advertisement, you know, because it looks the part, right? So when people talk about, uh, hey, I'm getting an English lab. Have you ever heard people say that? Uh -huh. They say it all the time, don't they? Right. Right? Uh, people, now, if you were in England, what do you think they say? A lab? <laughs> yeah, right. So, they, if you're in England, then they're all English labs, right? Okay. So, in England, they would say field lab versus show lab. Okay. So, let's look at this dog. So, he's springier. He's more agile. Here, you get down for a second. Or, scoot back this way. Oh. So, we bring this one up here. Look at this guy. Look at his head. His ear set's different. You see, he's got kind of a skinnier head. He's skinnier through here, smaller feet. Look at his tail. His tail's kind of skinny. Sometimes it curls up a little bit, okay. right? So when you look at them, let's put them side by side here. When you look at them, the one that's most likely to make you go, oh, oh is which one? This one. Right here, okay. And that's the one that's great for toting to carpool line because yeah. every all the kids are gonna go oh and then when you get done letting the kids play with him at carpool line mm -hmm. then he's gonna go home and chill and uh, sit on the couch and you know do nothing until it's time to go out for a little walk late at night this dog here at carpool line he's gonna look at all those little kids and he's gonna see potential ball throwers <laughs> and he's gonna get out and he's gonna jump around he's gonna be crazy and all those kids are gonna throw balls for him and right at the time you think he's tired he's gonna jump in the car and he's gonna get home and that little bitty rest period at 15, 20 minutes of, of, of between carpool and your house, he's going to recharge his batteries. And when you get out, guess what he's going to want to do again? Do it again. He's going to want to do it again. Yeah. So if you wanted a dog, now, so if Russ was looking for dogs, right? And I said, okay, Russ, this dog here is awesome. He's fast. He's athletic. He's agile. He fetches top notch, right? This dog uh, is pretty, but it's kind of lazy. Yeah. Which one would Russ, the husband, probably choose? Okay. That guy. Right. But look at the camera and tell them who really takes care of dogs. This moms. Girl. Only moms. Now, this isn't 100% true, right? <laughs> but generally speaking, moms have dogs. So if you're a mom and you're watching this, okay, and you have kids that have to go to carpool line, zoom in on that face, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you want. And that's what they call here an English bred dog. Now, if you're in England, they call that a showbred dog, right? Now, if you're a guy like me uh, and Eli, and you got plenty of time to go and do fun stuff, right? Then you want a dog like Charlie, okay? Because when Eli and I and George go out, this dog, about 10 minutes into our trip, they lay, he lays over on his side. Yeah. He's like, oh, you guys are walking up there? Uh, bring me something back. Okay. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. And so that's your basic difference. Now, what we're going to do here is we got a bunch of people down. We're going to go to the river. We're going to do some kayak, and we're going to do some fetching to further explain these differences. But uh, all in all, we're going to get you a dog, and I'm going to tell Russ <laughs> that this dog does things uh, a certain way, so he'll get this kind of dog, uh, but in reality, you and I will know the truth. <laughs> all right, so Laura obviously said, well, what if, because <laughs> I'm, you know, she's not going to go out and do too much exercising. She does her exercising in air conditioning. She said, but what if, Stoney, you know, I uh, will just get the dogs, and I'll put them on the back of our uh, UTV. And I'm like, okay, well, let's take a look at how dogs ride on UTVs. Because what you can do is you can take and exercise them on your ATV or UTV, and then when they get tired, uh, you can let them get up here and ride. But even something as simple as getting them to ride 
on an ATV is different. The dogs that are good, come on, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie. Uh, the dogs that are good at, uh, at moving, right, they're gonna hop right up here on the ATV usually. Uh, and then uh, like the dogs that aren't as good at moving, they're gonna have a little bit harder time getting up here. Good, but once they get up here, they're gonna have a little better time at staying. Right? Yeah. So that's a very valid uh, point that you brought up was Stoney, you know, I mean, uh, I got a lot of property. I just ride my ATV around. That's perfect. Right? But now you just have to remember if you get this little chubby, you're going to ride a little ways and he's going to want to, you know, uh, <laughs> be carted back. Yeah. This guy here, yes, he'll probably just run around and, uh, and, and, and follow you out and follow you back. But you might get in a position where like you want to take him riding, right? Maybe you want to take them on a big trail ride or something. You'll have to spend a little bit more time in the beginning stages getting this guy to stay on the ATV or in your kayak, right, or on your pontoon boat or on your ski boat than you do with this guy. So uh, I'm going to show you that right now. We're going to start this four-wheeler. And generally speaking, the more excitable dogs, whenever something starts to going on, any kind of, uh, you know, uh, stimulation in the environment, then these guys are going to be prone to move. And you'll see that later uh, when we go kayaking, okay? So anything in the environment that's new or novel stimulation make these guys move. These guys, these guys too, but less so. And it'll show up with both of these styles of dogs, like when you have company. You know how Terry gets excited when you have company? All right, Georgie, start the four-wheeler a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right, now just put it in first gear and put it in low so it's not going too fast. And now you're going to kind of take off and just go real slow. And I'm going to try to walk and keep these dogs on the four-wheeler. A little bit slower, a little bit slower. Very nice. Slow down. There we go. And this is how we introduce them to the four-wheeler. You know, we, we park our four-wheeler back there and uh, we, you know, kind of gradually acclimate them to sitting on it. And then we turn it on. And then once we've turned it on, uh, then we'll kind of start moving and we'll have one person come back here and, uh, and, and hold their leash, make sure they don't jump off. All right, Georgie, stop right there. Good. All right, Laura, uh, you, you know how to drive a four-wheeler? Yeah. <laughs> okay, lock that brake there, Georgie. All right, now you're from Pikeville. Everybody I've ever known from Pikeville knows how to ride a four-wheeler. So take your brake off. Hey, and do not go too fast. Wait, where's the brake? Oh, uh, where's the brake? What are you talking about? Where's the brake? Eli? She's already been in that bottle this morning, that jar, that's what it is. All right, now it's real slow. So if Russ buys you a new four-wheeler, that opens up the kind of dog you can have, right? Move over this way a little bit. Good, go up there and kind of get in front of Laura a little bit. Nice. Nice. Sit down there, little chubby. Perfect. Turn around there, Charlie. Oh, put your tail in. All right, you can go a little faster. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with you? I'm like nervous. That, take your thumb and put on that thing that's sticking out there. That's the throttle. Oh my lord. Yeah, just a little bit though. No, right down there. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Uh, now you got it. There you go. Now what you hear in the background, guys, is a crazy boxer. Okay, now once I feel like you've got it, I'm gonna now slow down for a second, stop. I'm gonna hop up here with these dogs. Oh, because Uncle Stoney's been already walking a whole bunch today, right? Now, your primary job is not to wreck us, okay? okay. <laughs> what do you think, Eli? Oh, good luck. All right. So, go up here, and uh, just gonna, you're going to go up there and just keep following Eli. Eli, I'll turn you around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's already getting in that throttle, Eli. I can tell she's wanting to go fast. But remember, you're going to throw me off here if you go too fast. Now, you see how this would open up a little bit uh, what kind of dogs you have, right? Yeah. You know? Are you having trouble keeping one? Most of them are fine, right? 
Both of them are fine right now because they're both pretty tired. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like if you, you know, if you have a farm, if you have an ATV, uh, then, you know, if you have an excitable dog, it, you know, it really doesn't make any difference because you could just like get out in the morning and instead of going on a big long hike, you just jump on your four-wheeler and uh, you just have to go, whoa, real slow. <laughs> Uh, how do you drive that Suburban? <laughs> uh, carpool lines full of dents. Whenever, it's like, 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 Laura goes to carpool line and it's just a demolition derby. I'm actually a great driver. A great driver, yeah. I can tell. Don't run over those dogs. Well, I know, that's what I was... Now, see, so, like, what you're going to notice with almost all of these exercises uh, that we do with the dogs is that the English bred dogs can do the exercises. You know, they just don't do them with as much uh, vigor. They don't do them with as much speed, maybe as much precision. And they don't do them, uh, they, 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 don't, they don't need to do them over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So they're kind of gregarious, fun-loving dogs. And they'll go out and they'll fetch something a couple of times maybe, yeah. you know. Whereas a dog like Charlie is going to want to fetch a hundred times in the morning, a hundred times in the afternoon, and a hundred times before bed. So when we're out here working the dogs, we work them all the same. It's just that the total volume of training required to keep the field bred dogs uh, being calm, attentive, and polite is different than the English bred dogs. So what's the best dog is, you know, just whatever the, the dog that suits your lifestyle it happens to be. So if Russ will buy you a new four-wheeler, does that change your mind about what kind of dog you could have? Now you're going to have to give it just a little bit more gas. Wait. Not too much. Here, let me throw him some food over there. There we go. Now see, I kind of use that food to distract him. Honestly, I, no, I don't think it really would change anything. Wouldn't change anything? No, I'm not going to, no. I'm no. Really You don't want to run. You don't want to ride a four-wheeler. Okay, that's fine. No, no, there's no problem with that. The, right. No, the whole thing is if you're just going to do something every once in a while, the English dogs are perfect for that. You know. And I want them to know like how to do it and act right. 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 Given that opportunity. And that's and that's what the English dogs are for. You can go out and do some fun stuff, but you don't have to go out and do fun stuff every single day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what we're after. Sit in a kayak, right, you know, but you don't want one necessarily that you got to take a break from kayaking right. and let them swim or fetch every 20 minutes. No, that, that's a perfect breakdown. And that's why so many moms choose these uh, English bred dogs, these, you know, what I call the little chubbies. And so many dads choose these field bred dogs, which is okay. You can stop right here. Which is okay if the dad actually plans to on carrying out what he thought he was going to do when but he was most watching of the time, YouTube. Most of the time most of the time they don't but now if you're the kind of person that's going to do it then the field bread is perfect so you just have to make sure and what i tell people is to actually sit down and make a list you know and then see if that list of the qualities that you like about a dog is going to fit into your schedule mm -hmm. not fit into your you know your Everybody. wishful yeah. schedule yeah. what are you actually going to be able to do right and so if you make a list and you journal it and then you keep track of it for a few weeks and you see where all that extra time was because everybody's going to oh i'll exercise them in the afternoon mm -hmm. where where did extra time go like look at your journal for the last week and show me where you had those extra 30 minute blocks mm -hmm. you know or you go you say well i'll just take it to work with me all right well when you take it to work this guy here's going to lay around this yeah. guy here's going to yeah. you know want to help yeah uh, is that going to make, you know, is that, are those people paying you to, like, uh, no. play with your dog? No. no. We do take but, Tara. Yes. And, and, they and what do they want to do? They want to come in and pet her and love on her and for one minute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They come in and pet and love on Charlie, and Charlie's going to be like, oh, you're here to fetch with me for the next hour? Uh -huh. Right? Does okay. that, that make sense? Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, we've got some nice people from... Uh, North Carolina come up to pick up Ruby. We're testing out Max to make sure that uh, things we've been working on to kennel are going to translate into real life situations. So we've come up here to the Kentucky River just to take a walk. And while we're walking, we want to make sure that dogs have fun.
but while they're having fun, they remain calm, attentive, and polite. And uh, we're going to put some effort into making sure that their vocabulary works as well in real life as it does in the in kennel situation. Be like elephants in a line here. Ready? So you just get behind me. Everybody, George, you bring up the rear. Ready? Got to do line. All right. So first thing we're going to do, guys, we're going to take off walking down this wood line. And uh, what we have is some nice sandy ground here. It's uh, pretty interesting. So we have sand right here. Okay. Then we have all these weeds. And then right off down in that gully there, it goes right down to the river. That's the river bank. And we're going to kind of walk up here. There's an old abandoned building, and it has a lot of steps. So we're going to kind of go down that. And then once we get down to where the river is, there's some culverts. So basically, we're just going to do, uh, you know, some exploring. And um, while we're exploring, like from the puppy's perspective, guys, this is a giant exploration. You know, remember what I say. Every day, be out looking for puppy-sized adventures. Now, while we're walking, I'm going to be looking for chances to uh, reward the dog. But what you'll notice is like when you get out into real life, like your food work, eh, you know, you got a dog and they're really like focused on sit and down and stand and roll over and stuff when you're in the house. But you bring them up here to the park and there's geese and there's uh, workers and the dam guys are up here banging around on stuff. You don't end up having the, uh, the food doesn't end up having the same effect that it has in your house. You know, so just understand that whenever you go out into a high distraction environment, there's going to be a certain amount of acclimation time and that what you've been using as a motivator, it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be as important to the dog when there's a lot of stuff going on. Like see right here, Mr. No Name is starting to pull a little bit. That's because some guys are up here in a truck and they're working on, uh, uh, they're working on uh, cleaning up some brush. So Eli, I go up right through the middle here like this. Now, as I walk up here and I get a little bit closer to these people, then you can, then you know for sure what's gonna happen is these dogs, hello fellas. These Hi. dogs are gonna be distracted uh, because these guys are doing work. And uh, so what I'm looking to do is just, you know, even if it takes me a little bit of extra effort, keep the dogs moving at a good pace. And uh, if they fall in good, you know, I'll try to reward them. But look, see, watch this, I offer Mr. No Name. So I offer Mr. No Name that treat, like he's not super interested in it. Look at Ruby, she's pulling a little bit. When you first go out into these big high distraction environments, you're gonna get some pulling. You know, you just have to accept that. You're gonna get some darting around and zigzagging, and it's best to not try to make uh, your healing, you know, not fun for the dog. So pace matching, move this way, Eli. Pace matching is not any fun for a dog. You know, walking with their head right by your knee. So we try to be pretty nice about uh, what our standards are. So we want them to like be on the left side and we want them not to cross our center line because if we're gonna fall, it's gonna be because the dog crosses our center line and gets us off balance. <clears throat> we want the dog to you know, roughly maintain uh, our pace, but not pace match at our knee. Basically, you know, we wanna be able to walk them without them pulling a whole lot. As we get farther and farther into this walk, you're going to see stages of this walk where the dogs are more or less excited. Okay? Now, as we're walking up here in the grass, the dogs will kind of settle. But these dogs really like the river, and so as we get towards the river, then they're going to have a harder time showing self-control. All right, so now just wait right here for a second. Let Eli get situated. Now, here, trade dogs with me. You take this one. Now, I'm going to take Ruby because Ruby is going to get a little bit more excited as we go down this hill. Now, yeah, don't, don't let him get you in a hurry. If you start going too fast, just be like, hey, stop and sit. Uh, <laughs> hey, where are you going? Get back up here. See, so if your dog gets going too fast, then you kind of stop and you show them that, look, you know, if you're a... Uh, you know, if you're going to be rude, we're not going to make any progress because that's what the dogs are wanting to do. They're wanting to get on down there to the river and, and do what they want to do. And what we're trying to make them understand is the only way to get to do what they want to do is to do what we want to do first. It's kind of like cleaning your room. If you want to go do something fun, you have to clean your room first. Go ahead down there a little ways, Eli. Dun, 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 dun. Now we come out of the shade. Uh, and as we come out of the shade, Oh, it's going to get quite a bit hotter. Good. But the dogs like it. Dun, 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 dun. 
Now we're out here walking again, a completely different environment. Guys, we went from the shady grass area, okay, to, oh, like muddy, sandy, rocky, watery stuff. There's a fish, there's a goose mess all over the place up here. Sit, stay. So make these dogs sit and stay for a minute. Sit, stay. We let them hang out. Reward that one for being good. We'll reward this one for being good. Good. Then we'll take off. We'll go to walking up the beach. Now, as I go by this water line, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble. You see how the dog, you know, is wanting to pull and get in the water line. So I'm going to cinch its leash up a little bit higher on his head so I got a little bit better control of it. And I expect some pulling. Each time that I come down here to the river, there will be a little less pulling, you know up into this drainage ditch and we're going to do a little bit of environmental socialization, work on proprioception and we're going to come back down here and uh, we're going to throw the dummy for my dog. Now, so from his perspective, when he gets to this river, all he wants to do is chase the dummy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him understand that he has to do the stuff that I would like for him to do first. Okay, so positive reinforcement training really is just a matter of taking something that you know that your dog likes and putting some requirements in front of it. Like, so for my requirements for play and fetch with uh, Mr. No Name in this river is for him to come up here and work on his homework, his proprioception work. Come on. I'm gonna work up through here. And Max is still back here doing well. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Very nice. We're just up here walking through these uh, rocks. Get into the slippery part. Come on, buddy. Think about where your feet are. Very nice. Now again, right here, look at these rocks. Can you see these rocks, Eli? Every one of these rocks represents a pitfall that could damage a dog. So you have to be very careful. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get them used to this kind of stuff while they're young so that when we go, when we go on vacation or when my clients go on vacation and they go on a hike, that's not the first time that the dogs had to really think about you know, proper foot placement and safety in relation to the environment. Come on, buddy. So some of these things are hard, some are soft, some are slippery. And we're just walking through here. Very nice. Get up through here. Good. You got running water. Oh, you're very smart. Walk up this super slippery part. Oh. All right, very nice. Okay, now we'll go back down this way. We'll come down the slippery part. Oh, you got to get in the slippery part, dude, not me. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, now I'm going to kind of guide him over these rocks. Here, come on. Walk over these rocks, dude. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Perfect. Oh, don't pull on the leash. Come on down through here. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, get on this side. Okay, so he did a pretty good job. Now I'm going to reach in my uh, pouch here, and I'm going to grab my dummy, and I'm going to say, okay, now we can do what you wanted to do. Oh, very nice dog. You are smarty. <laughs> and you can see that drop off right there. Good boy. Come on here. Come on, come on. Oh, good dog. Oh, you're such a good dog. Oh, you're such a good dog. Oh, look at Max. He wants to jump in there, Georgie. We'll see if Max wants to fetch it here in a second. Good boy. All right. Now we're just going to take off and walk down the bank line and uh, let the dog kind of play. Uh, yeah, just drop his leash, let him play. Good boy. <laughs> ah! 
Caesar, look, that little chubby likes to swim too. I don't know what Ruby's up there doing. Uh, Oh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> very nice dog. You're so smart. Oh, so smart. Oh, come on. Now, listen, guys. So this right here, this is just having fun, you know. Look at Max. Dang, Max. Oh, my gosh. He said, no, I'm not getting it. <laughs> he just wanted to go over and put his mouth on it. You're a good boy, Max. So see guys, basically, if you get you an English lab, what you do, they like to chase it, right? Just make sure that you get you a field bred lab to actually bring it back. You know, everybody will work out fine. You have one pretty one uh, that pretends to do the work and one that actually does the work. <laughs> Look. <laughs> uh. What are you doing? Oh, very nice. What do you think, Max? Back up. I'm gonna throw it off this uh, off this bank a little bit, Eli. See what Max does. Hey, look here, Max. Look here. <laughs> look at that chubby. <laughs> he liked it up there because it wasn't as deep. <laughs> Look! Uh, <laughs> oh, you are smarty. Oh, hey. Max, look here. <laughs> Max, he's cracking me up. Now, you see, look, uh, Mr. No Name fetch that dummy a uh, hundred times. And Max, yeah, he just kind of jump out there and act like he's going to fetch it. <laughs> oh, you're cracking me up, Max. Go get him. Go get him, Max. Fetch him up. Are you moral support? <laughs> uh oh. I almost threw it too far. Go get him, dude. Go get him. You can do it. Look, 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 look. <laughs> hey, listen, don't be <laughs> Look, that's just like a good looking person, right? You let the regular looking person do the work and then you come in and take all the credit. Uh, dang, dude, you're too spoiled. All right, now we're going to walk back down the uh, beach line. Uh, and instead of going up the steps, we're going to uh, go up uh, the uh, bank line. Now we're walking. Obviously, these dogs are going to get a little bit distracted because we have some canoers. Uh, what are you guys up to? Oh. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, Ruby, you can't get that excited. Not everybody wants to see you. Uh. Uh -uh. Uh, well, wait till we get past all these people. Okay. So something just popped up there. Um, you know, when you're out with the child, and uh, so like right there, uh, my little friend was like, hey, listen, can I hold Mr. No Name? But I have a bunch of kids that just pulled up in canoes right here. Okay, so I'm not going to put her in a, in a position to fail, and I'm not going to put this young dog in a position to fail. So, guys, you have to understand, no matter how much yard work you put in, no matter how much early exposure and training that you've done, when you have a dog in that mid-pubescent period, right, uh, and you go into a high distraction environment, especially a public environment, then there needs to be an adult in charge of the dog. Okay? Otherwise, you're just going to set a child up to fail, you're going to set the dog up to fail, then you're going to get frustrated, and you're not going to have a very good outing. And the key to having good dog training uh, that you've integrated into your life is to have fun. Okay, So sometimes having fun means that uh, you kind of designate one person in the group to be uh, the overarching uh, supervisor of the activity. That's usually the mom, sometimes the dad. Right? In this case, it's me. 
right? But so I know it hurt my little friend's feelings that she couldn't walk my dog, right? But I also know that it would have hurt her feelings more if he would have ended up jumping on somebody or if he would have ended up taking off and running away from her, you know, and he won't go far, but he'll go just far enough maybe to pull her arm or pull her down or make her trip. So wh why would I set myself up to fail? Why would I set her up to fail? So when you go out and you're doing your puppy-sized adventures, remember, you have to designate someone to be responsible because things can go south pretty quickly on you. All right, so let's go back to walking. Look at these free canoes, guys. Y'all want a canoe? We just hop in one. They just leave them here. <laughs> Eli and I find free boats and canoes up here all the time, don't we, Eli? <laughs> they, they, they stock them. They bring, the, they bring them up here. They leave uh, paddles in them for you and, uh, <laughs> and life jackets. We have a whole bunch of them at my kennel. Oh, here, Ruby, why don't you get on the inside? Oh. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so we're going to walk down this way, and then we're going to make our way through this brush up here. And then we're making our way through this brush uh, that'll be a little different experience than walking up the steps. So you guys will have to be real careful. Oh, well, hello, Max. Now, see, as we're walking, look how the, look how the environment starts to change, guys. Look, see these big hunks of clay? Like, see down there, it was washed. This clay that we run into earlier was washed slick from the drainage ditch. Now, down here, it kind of tur starts turning. From the dog's perspective, it kind of looks like a rock, but it's soft, you know. And those are, again, things that uh, a dog can't learn. I mean, you can't tell them about it. You can't let them, you know, read about it in a book. You just have to take them out, and you have to show them. And notice, like right here, I could be taking that smooth path. I could be taking the smooth path, but generally, guys, all taking the smooth path does is make you weak, you know. So we try not to raise weak dogs or weak children around here. So we take the hard path every time. Oh, you get on the outside. You get on the inside. Now, y'all be careful because it gets real slippery up here. Now see, isn't it more fun to take the hard path? You know, you feel how your ankles, guys, if y'all noticed that your ankles are like you're getting a little bit tired, okay? People have weak feet now. Everybody in the world has weak feet because you wear old cushion shoes and you're just on a flat surface. Come out here and walk around like this for a little while and when you go home, you'll notice that your toes and your ankles are a little tired, right? And what that tells you is that you need to get out and do a little bit more exploring. You need to do some, instead of just puppy-sized adventures, you need to do some suburban-sized adventures. Very nice. Now we're going to come up here and, uh, now see that old log up there in, 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 the, in our path? Do you think I'm going to go around that log or do you think I'm going to go over that log? Okay. I'm going to go over it. Why? Because that's the hard way. And what do we, how do we do things around here? The hard way. That's why <laughs> the dog business, listen, the dog business is full of people that always want to do things the easy way, you know? Not here, not Uncle Stoney. We do things the hard way every time. All right, so we're going to go here. Good. And if I've done my yard work right, oh, that won't end up being too awful hard for these dogs. <laughs> that little chubby had a little bit of trouble with it. Ugh. Now we're up here in this shady area. This is one of my favorite spots, is up here in this shady area. Okay, so going down that way a little bit. And as we're going through here, now we start looking for a path up and out this creek bank. All right, so who wants to, who wants to pick the path up and out the creek bank? All right, so let Eli catch us. And you take up off that creek bank. Right there is not a bad place to start, and we'll try to follow you. And this is, a, this is what we call... Uh, master level environmental socialization. Think she's gonna make it, Eli? I think so. Dang, the hard way. Take the hard way. You got it. Very nice. All right, North Carolina going up there. This is the 21st century, so we're letting women lead the way around here, even for little bitty teeny women. <laughs> all right, so now remember, now your sister, all she had to do was manage herself. You have to manage yourself and this English chubby. So be careful, because you could fall down. 
Very nice. Now talk to him. Be in, encourage him. Very nice. Now when you're climbing stuff like that, be careful what you use for base. Be careful what you lean on or grab because a lot of times it's not as, it, it, things aren't anchored like what you would think. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, now make it happen. Make it happen. Because he's not wanting to leave me. <laughs> Look at that chubby. Okay, I'll come help you. So we'll come up here. Oh, and when I get up here, he'll go with you. Oh, very nice. Oh, can you make it, Eli, or do you need some help? Uh, you guys are fixing to hear me lose my mind when Eli falls and breaks my camera setup. <laughs> uh, dang. And just like that, we're back out where we started. All right, guys, now after every puppy-sized adventure, after every suburban-sized adventure, you want to take a few minutes and do a mindfulness exercise. This works uh, well with dogs, works well with children. Because if we just come straight up that riverbank after doing all that activity, then put the dogs in the car, they're going to have a hard time settling. So when I've been doing something really super physically and mentally demanding, I always take about a five or 10 minute break, let everybody calm down, okay? And make that transition from being in the active conquering mindset to being in the calm, attentive, and polite mindset. So we're gonna... Man, it's a hot one at the river today. Okay, so this is going to be Charlie and River's uh, first experience at the, at, the, at the river, which that sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Charlie and River's first experience at the river. But I have a dog named River, so what am I going to do? Uh, so we're going to go down here. As soon as I get my kayak uh, situated, I'm just going to kind of let them go. Oh, they're already starting to get excited. I always expect that, guys. When you get into a big, fun, big time fun place, dogs are going to give you a little bit of trouble at first, so don't get frustrated. All right, so here we are. Now I'm just going to let everybody walk out here. And what the perfect thing that will happen is Mr. No Name will kind of go out here and these other dogs will just go out there with them. And uh, everybody will be happy. I see Rivers come out here a little bit. And this is a good sign. You see, he came right out here. And at the moment, he's, the water has come up to the bottom of his chest, so he hasn't really experienced much in the way of buoyancy yet. But as he moves out this direction, it's going to get a little deeper. And as it gets deeper, like that natural buoyancy is going to pick his feet up off the ground. And what we're hoping is that he's cool with it. Oh, look, and he was. Mr. No Name, come on. So we're just going to kind of toss this dummy out here. Hope these other dogs kind of, you know, take a lead from Mr. No Name. Come on, buddy. Look at that. Hey, that's perfect, Eli. <laughs> now, what you guys don't realize <laughs> is that fancy lawyer I was telling you about. She's up there. That's River's mom. She's standing over there on the, on the bank. And uh, she's so happy, uh, I'm going to charge her double. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Very nice. Good dogs. Oh, let me see it. I thought it was up here towards you, Eli. Now there goes Charlie. Good boy, Charlie. Charlie, come on, buddy. Now we saw Charlie the other day, and I was telling you how Charlie is the kind of dog that, like as a trainer, the only thing I could do is get in the way of him being a good, good, good uh, retriever. He's bred for it, and so he takes to it supernatural. This guy here, I'm just happy that he came out in the water. We don't expect much fetching, but we like the fact that he's got a confident demeanor, and he doesn't mind palling around with these dogs that are big fetchers. Very nice. Very nice. But for right now, we're just trying to get them happy get them moving around, and we foster a little bit of competition right here. Good, not too much. We don't let them get too rough, but we just want them to hang out, have a good time. 
Good. And you can kind of see a difference here. You see how Charlie is competing with Mr. No Name, and uh, this little guy here, he's just enjoying the beach weather, right? All right, now I'm gonna bring the kayak out. And if you guys will remember from the first video where we were letting the dogs uh, get in the kayak, just kind of giving them treats and stuff. So I'm gonna bring it out here. I'm gonna put it up here on the bank a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna splash it with some water. Guys, whenever you've been carrying your kayak on your car, remember that plastic gets really hot and your dog is not gonna wanna get up on the plastic until you've cooled it off. All right, so I've got it over here. Now remember, at the kennel, what we were doing, asking the dog to get up here. They'd get up here, we'd give them some treats. Charlie, come on, buddy. Bring River over here, Georgie. Good boy. See how Mr. No Name, he's hanging out up here. Good boy. Charlie, come on, Charlie, up, up, up. They're getting on there. Okay. So what that tells us, and here comes River, and he's getting right up there. So what that tells us is that our yard work has been super successful. We got a dog that understands that we'd like for him to get into the kayak. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to move the kayak out into the water. Give me one of those long lines, Georgie. And just kind of float it around. And you might say, well, Stoney, why not just jump right out into the kayaking part? Well, because if you jump right out into the kayaking part, you might end up uh, in the middle of the river, you know, trying to save your kayak, your telephone, uh, and your dog. Good. So we're just out here. We're moving around. Come on, Charlie. Get up in here, buddy. And this is where everything needs to start coming together. This is where your uh, initial kayak introduction starts to play out, okay? Teaching your dog to have good body awareness and foot placement. Teaching dog how to be calm, control their impulses. And what we're doing here is just letting the dog's bodies get used to the way the kayak moves in the water. And this really wouldn't matter what it was, but see where Charlie jumped off here? It's no big deal. Charlie, come on. It's no big deal because he can just jump right back on here. We're gonna use this as a chance to educate him Good boy, River. Good. Very nice. Good. Now, remember I was telling you in all those other videos about how dogs that are good at the motion exercises aren't good at being still? So notice, when River gets up here, it's easy to keep him up here because he's kind of good at being still and he doesn't disrupt the kayak much. Look how hectic Charlie is, okay? So Charlie wants to get up here, but he also wants to get out of here. That's the problem, guys. When you're picking these dogs, always remember that there's a trade-off. If you want one that's really good at being still, then you're gonna have trouble with all the fetching. Like when these two dogs started doing all the fetching, River just kind of went up there and hung out on the bank or he hung out by me. These two dogs were doing lots of fetching, but look, Charlie, but look how hard it is to keep Charlie settled in the kayak. You see how it's trade-offs, you know? Good. All right, so now we're gonna actually try to do some kayaking and show you the difference, what it's like to kayak with different kinds of dogs. So I'll start off, oh, with the one that I think's gonna be the easiest. Oh. Okay, <laughs> well listen, so my dog, <laughs> of course he's got a little jealous out here because he's like, you keep paying attention to all these dummies. I want to get out here and go kayaking. So I'm going to do Mr. No Name first, then I'll come back and get these other guys. Oh look, Rivers wanted to come too. Now this is how you know if you're doing good work, guys. If you're doing good work, then everybody wants to come. <laughs> Oh, now I don't know if I can get him in here without. Oh, get in there, fatty. <laughs> oh. So, whoa! 
<laughs> no, Charlie. No, don't do it. Listen, he's going to ruin my microphone, Eli. I've got to try to outrun Charlie. He's going to dump me. <laughs> oh, no. No, Charlie, you're not dumping me. <laughs> oh. We'll make Charlie swim for about an hour before I put him back in his kayak. <laughs> Where's Charlie? Is he sneaking up on me? <laughs> Look, I'm literally going to have to exercise Charlie for three hours before I can uh, let him in this kayak. Don't even think about getting in here without being asked, dude. <laughs> hey, is River still on here? Yeah, there he is. Look. <laughs> uh, see, if you'll notice, there's a, this is a theme throughout the whole video right here. You know, uh, these dogs here, they, they, they understand luxury, you know? They understand uh, letting the peasants do the work. Is he gonna jump? See, I, see what, as I thought he was gonna jump, I just brought him back out here farther in the river where he would have to swim farther. And I think he weighed that out. He was like, uh, listen, if I'm going to jump out, I'm going to wait till it ain't so much work. Settle down, dude. <laughs> Don't you do it, Charlie. Now see, so he was about to jump out. You know, he started to get a little frustrated. And so I just gave him a little piece of food. And these English labs, they like to eat so much. These showbread labs like to eat so much that that brought his attention right back to me. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but Charlie is still, he's still, let me move out of the way. Look at Charlie, he's back there still motoring around. So I want to get this dog's attention back on me. This is how much these guys like food. He's like, sure, sure thing. All right, so we're going to bring River back, or at least let him in the back. Maybe he's just going to keep riding. Oh, now wish me luck because we're going to try to get Charlie in here and try not to uh, ruin my microphone or drown. Charlie, come here, buddy. Now what I'm going to have to do with Charlie is uh, I'm going to have to try to kind of hold on to his leash. But it's real touch and go because if I hold on to his leash too much, he's going to dump me out of here. And if he dumps me out of here, it's going to ruin my microphone. So we're not going to go too far from the bank. Uh, when in doubt, guys, play it safe. Stay. Now, see how Charlie's up here to, at the bow of this boat and thinking about getting out? You might ask yourself, Stoney, why don't you just tell him to sit or lay down? Well, uh, the reason I don't just tell him to sit or lay down uh, is because I would be putting myself in a position to fail. It's very unlikely that I can get him to sit or to lay down and hold that posture because I'm having trouble just getting him to be calm, attentive, and polite in the boat in general. 
That's one of the biggest ma mistakes that we see with novice dog trainers is they go out and they're working on specific things like sit or down or uh, some type of trick when they don't have the general things that they need, which is just proper socialization, impulse control, uh, attention span, good proprioception. There's a lot going on here that you guys can't see in the video. This kayak is shaky. So it's an unstable surface, which that makes him want to move. Then he likes being in the water. That makes him want to move, right? My dog's up there playing with everybody. That makes Charlie want to move. And Charlie just likes moving in the first place. So I had to be very patient. And what I work on is getting a good general pattern of calm, attentive, and polite behavior in high distraction environments. And then I'll gradually develop uh, his skill set so that I expect him to be able to perform specific behaviors with speed and precision. But until I can just get him to sit in the boat and relax and be chill, I'm most certainly not going to be able to tell him to hold a certain posture in the boat while we paddle around out here. <laughs> uh, now this is a full service kennel here. <laughs> so uh, I've got Lisa and I'm going to uh, load her up in here. Good. I'm going to load her dog up. Oh, very nice. All right. And I've sent George after a long line because although <laughs> Lisa says that she knows how to swim, I don't know for sure. And she is from up north. And so, you know, <laughs> we don't trust Yankees a whole lot here. Especially the Yankee lawyers. Especially Yankee lawyers. That's 100% true. She's probably down here secretly trying to steal some of our mineral rights, if I had to guess. All right, so now we're going to push you out there. Nice. We're going to walk her back down this way here, Eli. Now, if he jumps out of there, I'll get him. Don't you try to rescue him. <laughs> now, remember what we were talking about, guys. We're just trying to reduce our incidence rate of failure. So we got a failure. You know what the great thing about failure is, though, Lisa? I can try again. You get to do it again. You know what I'm saying? And you can only fail so many times. After a while, you'll start to get it right. Very nice. I'll send you on out there and then I'll probably turn you around. All right, now be ready because I'm going to turn you around a little bit. There you go. Dang, nice. Now we're going to send him out a little deeper. Now look, this guy, he's sitting up here being good. Now, since I'm going to send him out a little deeper, I'm going to give him something to kind of keep his mind on. So I threw a few treats down there in the... Oh! In the boat. Uh-oh. <laughs> ah! Oh, no! <laughs> Should I just let her go, Eli? <laughs> Bye! <laughs> nice knowing you. <laughs> uh. Very good. I'm going to spin you around a little bit. Now, when this dog comes back, he did great then. And so you see how I'm kind of distracting him because I don't want him to jump out over there. I can get to him pretty easy here, but there's a precipitous drop off and I would have to swim uh, to go out there and rescue them both. Oh, and although I do bear a striking resemblance to David Hasselhoff, uh, it's been a while since I had my lifeguard credential certified.
All right, now I'm gonna send you out this way, and then I'm gonna, don't be surprised, but I'm gonna put, use the, oh, I'm gonna use the, uh, oh, I'm gonna send them out, and I'm gonna use the long line to turn them around. So one of the things that'll make your dog jump out of the kayak is when you're making turns, because uh, they kind of get a little bit off balance. So I'm gonna send them out this way, and then watch, I'm gonna turn them. See that turn? And that's a pretty fast turn when I do it with the long line. Do you feel that, how it's faster? And what we're trying to do when we're using the long line like that, guys, is make sure that the dog, if you do end up in a position where, like, you hit a little bit of, uh, you know, like a, a little bit of fast moving water, or you hit some rocks, or you hit some limbs or something that spins you around, uh, that, the dog has, that the dog's first experience with a quick turn wasn't when you really needed them to stay in the boat. Does that make sense, Lisa? So again, I'm gonna do it. Don't make a fast movement or you'll fall out of the boat too. So I send you out. Now I'm gonna spin them around real fast. And that way, like if you were going down a stream and you kind of hit a rock or a sudden turn in the, in the bend, you know, like and you spun around, it won't be the dog's first time. We've had a million of them jump out, you know, when we're on the little creek and the water gets up a little bit and you're, you know, talking. Maybe you've been in that mason jar a little bit and uh, <laughs> not paying good attention. The next thing you know, you're, you know, you're spinning and the dog jumps out. You try to grab the dog. Oh, and when you try to grab the dog, everything goes south. So I'm gonna spin them. Dang, nice. Bring them in. Oh, and there's what I'm talking about. Oh, but I created that situation so that it didn't have to pop up. Uh, when you were really on vacation. Everything when we're doing, when we're like doing environmental uh, socialization, we're thinking about saving you trouble in your real life. What people do when they're training is they, they train where they're gonna be successful only. And then when they go out in real life, you know that's not how real life works. Or it's not how it works down here, you know. Uh, and they have their first little setback, their first little failure, and it crushes them. Oh, guys, that whole millennial concept doesn't apply just to people. It applies to dogs also. There's a lot of dogs that can't deal with mental and physical adversity today. There you go. And I'm going to spin them. Woo! Very nice. Dang. Here they come. Here they come. Dang. Dang, very nice. Woo! Back on the kayak. Better, okay. Better to uh, scream under adversity than to making it cold. Dogs, wives, children, all need to be raised a little adversity. Dang, nice. Come on in here. Fast. Now watch me pull them around. Whoa! Now you see how, see how much better he did right then? Okay. Take them out. Now they're going out. Now I'm going to spin them. Whoa! Now I'm going to bring them in super fast. Got a little weight going. Whoa! Same thing. I'm going to send them out. And whoa! <laughs> and look at that, look how, look how sure-footed he's getting already, Eli. Nice. If he stays on that boat, I'm gonna give him a fat treat. A little bit of dog crack. Dang, pretty, pretty dog and a pretty fancy lawyer. Beautiful day in the bluegrass. All right, Georgie, get Charlie. Now you watch, <laughs> watch, watch George, he's gonna drown out here. All right, so now we're putting George in here. We need to get a repetition with Charlie, okay? But again, Charlie in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, okay? But look who didn't wanna get 
<laughs> the kayak, the dog of leisure, <laughs> right? That's a good way to think about this. Instead of thinking about in terms of a English lab, think in terms about a leisure lab, because that's, you know, that's a more apt description from my point of view. What do you think, Eli? I think so. Too. Dogs of leisure, aren't they? All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put uh, George and uh, Charlie in the kayak, and we're going to try to get uh, Charlie to stay in, and River, he just didn't leave, so we'll leave him in there. Uh, now, it would be a little much to ask George at 12 years old to be able to paddle and handle this dog. Okay, so we're going to go back to uh, using the long line. Oh! And I'm just going to push him out in there. Uh, as a matter of fact, George, you just give me that. Just toss that uh, paddle up there on the bank. There you go. Now hold Charlie's leash. I'll give it to you. Now you know how we're always talking about mentor dogs. And we're going to try to use River, even though he's only 13 weeks old. How old is he, Lisa? 14 weeks old. 14 weeks old. Hopefully he'll have a common influence on Charlie. But I'm about 80% sure George is going to end up in the river. Now here comes my dog. Just hanging out watching. Oh. So I'm put these guys out. Let them go away. Gradually stop them. Bring them back in. Now the things that you should be looking for on this video is like notice whenever you hear a sound in the background or if you see something fly by or if you see something float by, watch the expression on Charlie's face change. Any little bit of movement, any little bit of sound gets Charlie fired up. And we'll get a few where I'm just pulling them straight to me. And once they start to kind of get in the hang of that, then we'll practice in with the turns. We're going to start working on our turns. So I send them away. Now watch, I'm going to turn them. And here comes the turn. Very nice. Very nice. Bring them back. See, looky there. Very nice. Turn them. I'm gonna do it towards you, Eli. Maybe that be. Maybe they can see it better. So I get them going. Now I turn them. Good. Bring them back. Mr. Jordan. Slide them right past me. Good. I'm going to move up here so they're moving with the current. Get back in there, fatty. Oh, no. Come on, Shelby. Oh, you can do it. Oh, good dog. Now, the more dogs that are in there, the more unstable it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> and move them and turn them. I win the kayak on this. <laughs> uh, spin them by. Oh! oh. 
Send them on their way. Oh no! Send them by. Now I'm going to turn them. And see, I turn them with pretty, you know. See that? Could you get that, Eli? Yep. Yep. And see, I mean, I really made that kayak uh, waller a little bit because that's what it's like in real life. You know, you're going along, and then all of a sudden the weight distribution right there. The weight distribution gets off, and the next thing you know, you're in the water. So, send them on their way. Now I'm going to turn them abruptly. <laughs> what happened, Chubby? Look, River says, hey, I've had enough. I'm tired. Huh? Oh. Come here, Chubster. Come here, Chubster. We're going to do it one more time. So we don't want to end on a... Oh, we don't want to end on a low note. Oh. And the great thing... <laughs> and the great thing about kayaking is, like, it doesn't require a lot of effort. So you can get some extra repetitions if you need to. So bring them up. Gonna turn them around. It's like on my back. Nice quick turn. Now I'm gonna send them on their way. Oh, wait a minute. Now I'm gonna send them on their way. Oh! There we go. Now he's got it. Now he's got it. Very nice. Very nice. 180 degree turn. And Charlie's managed to stay in there for a fair amount of time. All in all, we're going to consider this a successful kayaking session. Very nice. Wait, now I'm going to get up here. We'll make him wait just a second. And then tell him. Okay. Very nice. George, you survived. High five. Okay. Now we'll do a quick fetching. All right, so now we're going to actually work on a formal retrieving exercise. Uh, I'm going to go over here and uh, make Mr. No Name stay. And I'm going to throw my retrieving item out in the river. And then Mr. No Name needs to wait until released. And I'd like for him to go out there with some style and vigor and get it and turn around and come straight back to me. Uh, now he's a young dog, so I'm going to kind of meet him halfway so he doesn't have a chance to kind of shoot off to the left or the right and, uh, you know, get in the habit of, of not coming straight back to me. Tell him to stay. Take my retrieving item. And I'm not going to hold pressure on this leash, but I've got it here just in case I need it. So tell him to stay. I throw the retrieving item. And then I go, no, no. Theoretically, he should go get it and bring it back to me. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, good boy. Very good dog. Very nice. Oh, you're a good dog. So we do it from a different angle. Sit, stay. Tell the dog to sit and stay. He's released, no name. I'm going to walk up here to help him think about how I want him to come back. Come on, buddy. You're a good dog. It's easier to influence them while you're, if you get in the water, too. And then, of course, as, it, as time progresses, uh, then uh, you don't need to get in the water. We're lined up together. I have slack in my lead, but my lead is there in case he decides to break. I'm going to tell him to stay. Throw my retrieving item. I've got a number in my head, and when I get to that number, I release him. No name. 
I want him to go nice and straight into the water. And then since he's a young dog, I'm going to kind of come out here and encourage him to come straight back to me. Come here, buddy. Good dog. Very nice. This straight line right here is real hard to get. A lot of times I use the long line. Uh, uh, but I'm trying to fade away from it. And so I'm just going to meet him halfway in the water. Works out uh, pretty well, if you don't mind getting wet anyway. So we're going to come up here and we're going to do it again. And we'll get him into position. Sit. Stay. Throw my retrieving item. I've got a number in my mind. Get to that number. Release. No, no. Let him swim out to it. He's going with a nice straight line. Powerful strokes. I'm going to get out here. I'm going to get his attention with this whistle. And I want him to fight the current on his way back to me. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Oh, what a good dog. What a good dog you are. You're a very good dog. You're a fine animal. Very nice. Oh, you're a good dog. So that... Sit. Stay. Throw my retrieving item. Hit my number in my head. Release. Oh, no. He goes and gets it. I meet him halfway. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Oh, you're a fine animal. That's a pretty straight line, considering the current's wanting to take him that way. Very nice. Delivered it to hand. Oh, all right. Now we'll get another dog. Okay, now we're going to do the same drill with Charlie. Come on, Charlie. Get over here, try to line him up. Now, Charlie's a great fetcher. He's great at the movement exercises. But look, see guys? See how he's all antsy? All right. I understand I'm going to have a little bit of trouble uh, getting Charlie to settle here. Over the course of coming here, though, you know, he's going to learn that being calm, attentive, and polite is what leads to getting to retrieve. So I might have a little bit of trouble these first few. Uh, all I need is three to five, but to be honest with you, if he gets it right on his first or second one, I might just stop there. I kind of focus on progressive improvement. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get to the end of my journey today, but I'm trying to make some progress. Stay. Throw my retrieving item. Charlie. Nice. Come out here, meet him in the middle. Charlie, come on. And you'll notice Charlie kind of gets distracted as he's swimming by things that are in the water. And the only thing that fixes that is ex experience. Come on, buddy. See right there where, like, he had a hold of his dummy and some wood went by him. And as the wood went by him, he started thinking about fetching the wood. Guys, dogs, if they make mistakes, uh, you know, out of exuberance, Try to be understanding. I mean, you know, if you go to the trouble of buying one of these dogs that's going to be a great retriever, a great hunting dog, then you have to understand in his quest to do the activity, he's going to make some mistakes. And if they're, if they, you know, if their speed is up and their attitude's up, they're retrieving with a great, with, with, with great style and they make a few mistakes, hey, don't fuss at them, you know, just, just get a little bit better every week. And before you know it, you got a dog that's, you know, performing with speed and precision right but maintains that good attitude and happy outlook towards the activity sit i'm going to back up a little bit so you guys can see how charlie in, uh, enters the water sit stay throw my retrieving item now right there you saw charlie like he tried to rush me and i had to make him wait i gotta have slack in my leash then i'll tell him charlie that's what people like right there. You see that gallop and run and jump into the water? You don't want to lose that. You don't want to, like, have a dog that just has a lot of, uh, you know, like, vigor, like Charlie, and lose that because you focus on, on uh, precision too early in the process. Very nice. So I'm going to back up a little bit here and give him a little bit more running space so you guys can see how he enters the water. I'm going to adjust my leash so I have good control over him. Dogs that love to fetch, sometimes they don't love to stay, like I've been saying. All right now, I'm going to throw my retrieving item. I'm going to hit my number in my head. Then I'm going to release Charlie. Charlie. Boom! That's what we like to see right there. You see, he comes over here and he jumps and he's having a big time. Good boy, Charlie. Good boy. And I come out here quickly 
because I don't want him to get distracted. I know he'll get distracted, oh, by all these sticks and stuff up here on the beach because Charlie likes to fetch anything. Sticks, dummies, balls. We're gonna try that one more time because that was two, that's two pretty good repetitions. I'm gonna back back up here, get another entry like that because I like that stylish entry. Stay, throw my retrieving item pretty far, hit my number in my head, release, Charlie. And there he was. That looks look nice on the video, Eli. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm gonna come out here and meet him. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Very nice. Oh, you can do it. Come on. Okay. Now bring me river. So you saw Mr. No Name fetch and you saw Charlie fetch. Now we're gonna give River a chance. Okay, so what do you think's gonna happen, Eli? Not a whole lot. <laughs> All right, now you sit there and stay. Now here's your retrieving item. River. <laughs> fetch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. So there you see, guys. Movement versus being still. This dog's good at being still. It's good at being pretty. It's a leisure lab. Uh, George, send one of them other labs to get this uh, dummy. This dog's doing a good job, Eli. What not? Okay, you can go ahead and fetch him up. Or watch him fetch it up. But then, skips <laughs> when he comes up. <laughs> like, look at what's happening with this guy. He's still sitting over here looking. Sitting and looking. Good boy, Mr. No Name. Very nice. All right, now pretty much done with our fetching in the water exercises. But we got a couple other things that we can work on. We go up here in the shade. There's a big old tree up here that I like to get the dogs to climb. Remember, always make use of your environment. Every environment has things to offer as it relates to uh, you know getting your dog to develop its physical and mental resiliency so i'm gonna come up here good now there's a big old giant hunk of a tree over here i don't know if eli can get in here and show it to you but look how big this piece of tree is this didn't used to be here and the river got up real high and drug it down here so I'm gonna climb up here on it. Oh, and then I'm just gonna try to, you know, encourage these dogs to get up here with me. River, what you doing? You wanna try to get up here? So I'm gonna give River a little bit of enticement. Oh, Mr. No Name, he'll try it. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Very nice. Oh, very nice. Go on, go off that side. Oh, River needs a little help. Oh, come on, buddy. Good boy, very nice. Put them off on this side. Oh, and then we'll go the other way. Come on, Charlie. Very nice. Now they went over to that side. Now just get them. Going this direction. Oh, very nice dog. Very nice dog. But you have to get down. Oh, you can go down. Going down, guys, can be harder for them than going up. Good boy. Come on. Hop, 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 hop. Put some effort into it. Oh, good boy. And look at Charlie. Where did you come from, Charlie? <laughs> Charlie, he, he just shows up, guys. He wants his Gatorade bottle. He knows that, that Gatorade bottle that he found earlier is in my pocket. And he was back there trying to steal it. Good boy. All right. Go on and go down that way. You can do it. Go on down there. Good. And then we'll go back over this way. And my goal would be here, guys, to have to give them a little less help every time. So see how my dog's acting like he might not be able to do it? I just put my hand on the back of his head. Oh, that's a pretty simple trick. Once they can get their paws up on something, if you'll just put your hand on the back of their head, then they'll arch into your hand and use their shoulder muscles to bring them all the way up. Oh, you're a very good dog. But go on down that way. River. Come on, River. So River's over there, found some plastic, had to rescue him from that. Whoa, and I had a little bit of food. Do you see how that food made him hop right up there? Good, that's how much these English labs, these showbread labs like food. I mean, it's amazing. Good boy. All right, now one more time back over this way. 
Mr. No Name, come on, buddy. Come on, you can do it. Come on, put some effort into it. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Are you the boss, Charlie? Are you the boss moving dog? Are you the most athletic, hardest working dog that we have? Get down that way. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Put my hand right here on the back of his head. Help him use his shoulders. <laughs> Go on, get down. Is Charlie behind me again? Yep. Well, hello, Charlie. Give Charlie a treat. River, come on, buddy. Oh, we're going to give River a little help. Oh, bring a little bit of food work into the play here. Very nice. Oh. Now, so Charlie's up here. River's up here. Oh, come on on in. Up, up, up. Give Mr. No Name a little bit of help. Oh. And that, guys, is how we, uh, you know, end a session. You want to end on a high note. We had a lot of productive activities today. We had a visitor down from Pittsburgh. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we did our kayaking work. Uh, we did some fun retrieving, and we did a little bit, just a teeny bit of formal retrieving. Uh, then some uh, environmental socialization. <laughs> and uh, now we're uh, <laughs> headed back to the kennel, and uh, we might even break open that jar for a minute or two. What do you think, Eli? I think so. <laughs> All right, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Listen, guys, they were making fun of me. <laughs> because I'm over here getting cleaned up in this drainage water, which is probably about 20% uh, sewage or something, who knows. But like, uh, I don't think y'all understand just how dirty and grimy you get as a dog trainer. I mean, if you're really a dog trainer that's out putting in the kind of work that you should get. And uh, so I just had so much sand on me that I had to come over here and take a quick bath. Even <laughs> no matter what's in this water, it had to be better and walking around with all that sand in my shoe, you know? And uh, so they were over there making fun of me. Like, I, you know, I'm some poor sockless hillbilly, but man has got to do what a man has to do when it comes to having sand in his shoe. <laughs>